Mr. Chairman and members, I'm sure that many of you, like me, were deeply saddened by the news of Stephen Hawking's death earlier this month. At the age of just 22, Professor Hawkins was diagnosed with motor neurons disease, and given only a few years to live. The illness left him in a wheelchair, and then unable to speak, except through a voice machine. However, despite his adversity, Stephen Hawkins went on to become one of the world's leading scientists, making a number of significant discoveries and inspiring millions through his best-selling book, A Brief History of Time. Stephen Hawkins demonstrated my belief that everyone has something to contribute to society, irrespective of a disability. He should be a role model for all of us. That's why today, Mr Chairman, I'm delighted to announce that the County Council will be supporting the Disability Rights UK in I Can Make a Pledge campaign to increase employment opportunities for young and disabled people. The Council is already committed to this through our Equalities, Fairness and Respect strategy. And it goes without saying that young people deserve the opportunity to participate in the workforce and live independent lives regardless of a disability. I want to thank all Surrey employers who already support this campaign and urge all others to do the same. Despite the challenges he had to overcome, Stephen Hawking had an unwavering belief that he could make a difference to society, that we all can make a difference. He said very powerfully, however difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. I've always been inspired by his positive spirit, and never more so than now, as we face probably the most difficult period in this council's history. However, as those of you who know me will testify, I've never been one to shy away from a challenge. And yes, we have challenges. Yes, we need our services. Yes, the need for our services is greater than ever. Yes, there are difficult decisions to make. And yes, funding for these services is dwindling. But we have a robust plan to tackle this. We have a budget agreed in this chamber at our last council meeting. Next week, the cabinet meeting will include an item on our medium-term financial plan, where we will take further decisions on the detailed service budgets for the coming year. And at this point, Mr Chairman, may I say thank you to the select committees uh, up and down the service here for the work they've done to help to challenge the budget. I think that's really important. We should never lose sight of the important role of our select committees. Those papers have already been published and are available on our website. And I would urge all members to read them if they've not already had the opportunity. Mr Chairman, let me reassure members, we will continue to provide services for our most vulnerable. We will continue to ensure Surrey is a vibrant and economically successful place to live and work. Of course, the financial realities we face mean there will have to be more changes. We've already delivered enormous levels of savings. Our public value review programme, for example, saw us achieve over £300 million worth of savings whilst improving our services. But we cannot rest on our laurels. We must go further. We need to continue to make inefficiencies. That's a given. But I know we have to go further and transform again, finding new ways to do new things. That's so we can live within our means, do the best for our residents and energise our staff to greater achievements. But it's also right to transform, again, because the world around us continues to change at a pace. And we must keep up with that pace. Driverless cars, electric vehicles, digital currency, machine learning systems and robotics are no longer the domain of the science fiction novels. They are with us now. This means we need to look to the future, as Hawkins did, and imagine the possibilities emerging from new technologies. We must innovate. We must work with our universities, entrepreneurs and Surrey businesses to find new solutions to complex problems. We must also invest for the future 
and plan for those things that are becoming more and more important to our residents, especially our young people. We need to ensure they've got the right skills, the connectivity, smart technology, air quality and environment protection. We must be more collaborative, working with our partners and our communities to generate the practical local solutions that will take us through some challenging times ahead. But we must work together so as we grasp the opportunities before us too. That work has already begun, Mr Chairman. Our work with the districts and boroughs as part of our business rate pilot will open up new ways for us to support and grow the Surrey businesses and our economy. Our work with the National Health Service partners to put in place a new model for health and social care through Surrey Heartlands promises to revolutionise the support we offer to our residents, something my colleague Mrs Clack will say more in her statement later. Our work with the NHS partners and others to learn from the innovation, the innovative Surrey uh, dementia testbed to find new ways of using technology to better meet people's cares and support as they age. And of course, there is the work we're doing with local Rotary clubs and other voluntary and community and faith groups to ensure that the lonely and the vulnerable members of our societies can be supported in their local communities, by their communities, helping them to remain part of their community. We want people to be in a community, not in a hospital. But like everybody else in local government, the opportunities and challenges we face mean that all of us must step up the scale and pace of transformation. And that's why I'm delighted our new Chief Executive, Joanna Killen, has joined us earlier this month. Joanna is already with the, working with the corporate leadership to deliver our vision for a council that supports individuals and communities to thrive. Welcome, Joanna. And I'm delighted that our senior officer leadership team will be bolstered by the appointment of Dave Hill as our new Executive Director for Children, Families and Learning. Dave has significant experience, including as a government commissioner for children's services. And I personally believe he will play a key role in continuing our improvements and making sure our work has a positive impact for those children most in need of protection and care. Surely one of our major priorities. At the same time, I'm really sorry to see Julie Fisher leave us. Julie has dedicated nearly 12 years' service to the Council and I'm particularly grateful for the role that she's played over the past six months as the Acting Chief Executive. The six months progress report you have all before you is a testament of the great work that has taken place under her leadership. So thank you, Julie. I know you're not here today, but I'm sure you'll re look later. And we wish you and your family all the best in whatever you do in the future. Julie has been instrumental in supporting our people and places agenda shaping how the council needs to work and deliver services in the future. This means delivering the services that our residents need in a way that makes them best access for them to those services. This means better joining up our, our own services and closer working with our partners to focus on early help and prevention. It means more emphasis on providing services online and making them easier to access for our residents and bringing services together under one roof in the right place where they are needed. That's part of our plan for more sustainable local services, but it's also better for our residents and better to ensure that our service and outcomes are what residents need. You will recall, Mr Chairman, that when I stood here in December, I challenged each and every one of us to be game changers for our communities. Be that community leader, work together as one team, help shape the future of our services, and above all, put our residents and communities first. Of course, for some of us, our Twin Hatton members, there are district and borough elections in May, and many of us, I'm sure, will be out campaigning on their behalf. Regardless of the political pressures, that gives all of us the opportunity to be those game changers. Mr Chairman and members, I want to end my speech today with a quote from Stephen Hawkins that inspires me and will perhaps inspire you throughout the months ahead. Remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and, what, and the wonders about what make the universe exist.
Be curious. And however difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. It matters that you don't just give up, but always try.